Hey everybody, welcome back. Uh, we're to the point we're gonna clean up the axe head a little bit. Probably not gonna show you a whole lot of this one. I'll uh, I'll knock it out. That's really for another video. I already did one of those videos and then I don't know what I did. I, I messed it up. I put it on slow-mo somehow and you didn't want to watch an entire axe head getting fixed with uh, slow motion on, so. Here's our axe head. Still the same one, I promise. I didn't grab the wrong one this time. You can see where he's at. He's in pretty good shape. I'm just gonna hit him with a wire brush out here, keep as much of the patina and uh, that little red paint on there as I can. So, uh, just so you saw, you gotta put the safety goggles on. Please, anytime, anytime you're dealing with grinders, especially with wire wheels, cutting discs on, anytime really, but then especially, don't try to wear your safety squints. It will, uh, it will cost you eventually. That is a very dangerous item right there. Gloves. I've picked those things out of my stomach and my arms and my face. Those wires, they break off. Yeah. You just, just be careful. It's not worth losing your eyesight over a hobby. I've had metal drilled out of my eyeball too, and it's not pleasant. So, wear your safety goggles. Down here, just a little bit. So maybe you can see better what's going on. It's not the easiest way to do it, but hey, this isn't a video of how to make it easy on me. It's a video to maybe show you guys a little bit of what I do and you can like it or lump it or do it or try it or not. It's up to you. And <clears throat> it's gonna get loud. So uh, here we go. As you can see, that paint is not gonna stay on there. It's, it's all but gone. So we're not gonna try to save the paint at this point. I was just barely touching that. <clears throat> just a quick point. This is rotating this way. So as you come to this edge, as it's rotating over that edge, it's gonna pull you that way. You saw it hit over here and bounce back. So you really should work like this way and then when you want to do the other half just come over here and you know we're going to work back this way that way it, it doesn't shoot this back at us quite so hard Side one. <clears throat> Side two. And, uh, we're, we're not ending up with a lot of patina. There's Sometimes you get a, an ash, you can clean it up with the wire wheel and it's got some good, sometimes more rust is better. You can just get that rust off and you kind of burnish it down with the uh, wire wheel and it looks really nice. This one's actually cleaning up really good, but it's got some dings in it, so we're not gonna polish it out. So what we may do, we may get a little bonus section in here and we'll cold blue this bugger. I'll show you how to cold blue with that uh, Birchwood Casey cold bluing. It, it's a different look, it's a really nice look. So we'll, we'll get there when we get there.
jaws gone on this side, so that's smooth. It doesn't make marks. This side still got the little knurling cross hatching, so I don't want to <coughs> put marks in the head any more than I have to. I mean, a ding in the head shows that it's been used. I, I kind of feel like if you're putting vice marks in there, it's you're not trying hard enough to do your job right. And, you know, we found some of those already. We don't need to make our own. So here we go. isn't gonna undo it. Alright, so first uh, step in surface conditioning is done. We're gonna Hey, I had a little discussion with myself. That is another video completely. I'm just gonna clean this guy up get him ready and i'll bring you back when we mount him on the handle because that's what these videos are about that's this series so see you in a little bit all right we're back got this guy cleaned up i showed you the cleanup process i didn't do any more then i decided that it's another video i'll show you how to sharpen this and i'm not going to blue this one or anything like i kind of said i might so here we go got an edge on there it's what I would call a rough polish and we'll talk about that in another video but uh, this is utility grade I I just figure this is a utility grade I'm not going to spend the time to polish this out all the way but I will spend a little time finishing that edge with the polisher because I'll guarantee you that turkey is sharp really sharp and I'm just starting to kind of figure out that maybe that makes the edge harder or last longer. I don't know why it would. Well, I kind of think I know why it would, but I'm not going to say because just because. And here, let's try this again. The infamous paper trick. I bet it doesn't work because it never does for me. Let me get rid of that. Oh, look at that. Okay, pushing my luck. It worked twice. We're done. Ha-ha! <laughs> That's a win in my column. All right, so uh, that is done. We're looking at that. I just really like the black walnut. We're going to use that. Future videos, we're going to do cross wedges. We're going to do multiple piece wedges, which is a cross wedge, but not, you know, in different configurations. Um, just going to drop this. This isn't always going to be a channel that's strictly axes, chainsaws, stuff like that. We're, you know, that's where we're at right now as the channel continues to grow we're gonna do all sorts of stuff I'm, I'm not just an axe and chainsaw guy in fact I'm just becoming an axe and chainsaw guy this is new for me that's that's why I'm doing videos on it now it just came together that way so you guys subscribe to the channel and hang around who knows what you're gonna see so we've decided on this wedge first thing that I do is I'm I gotta fit it to the axe by so we got a little trimming to do there I'll get it fit to width just gonna take a rough gander here gonna take a quick 
measure that so we're gonna cut that guy right there remember eyes taper this is more narrow than this this is wider than this we're gonna make our wedge match that all right so I brought you out here to the bandsaw we're gonna I'm, I'm not gonna use this straight edge any of that kind of stuff we're just gonna cut this guy we're gonna sand on him we're gonna get him right so we got a lot of work to do with him let's go The piece up here, I've got lots of little pieces of guys of stuffs. I just got lots of them. Different configurations, different woods. Those we'll we'll use all these eventually in a in a wedge, multi-piece wedge, and they're really cool looking. So just don't throw stuff away. Eventually you gotta throw something away, but not not yet. So I'm gonna pack you over here. I got so much, so much stuff in the way. I am not good at cleaning up after myself. I can't find my little tripod, so you're gonna have to bear with me on this one. I think you can see. So, ooh, man, it is so cold out here. Let's see how we did on our, that's perfect. We're gonna, we're gonna, probably cut the top of this off some. We want about two-thirds of that in there. So let's just, why not? Let's just do that right now. Because I know how far it needs to go. We're gonna say that's about two-thirds. I think I made a mark there. Hang tight. I won't move you. See, that didn't take long. And I'm gonna tell you, in my experience so far, if you're gonna shorten a wedge, shorten the fat end. Shorten the fat end. It's always too fat. I always spend a lot of time on this, thinning this guy out. And if I cut this in, it just takes longer. So uh, that gets us pretty, pretty darn close. Like we we might have a little gap up here, and yeah, we'll see where we where we get. I might have trained him too quick. <laughs> I trimmed him too quick, folks. I'm gonna have to do another one, or is now the time. Hang tight. I'm gonna pause you. We're gonna we're gonna do a multi wedge this time. I think because it's her favorite thing. Dana's over here turning a pen. Actually, I'm breaking a pen. Okay, she's breaking a pen. <laughs> Apparently, we're both having a night. Yep. Wow. Yeah. Well, I did a number on it. <laughs> Firewood. Another video. Soon to come. So there we are back at the sander. I came in here where it's warm. I'm tired of being cold. We're gonna do this. I'm not sure. I'm not sure how, but I'm gonna go ahead and I got an ID. Got an ID. So I want to make uh the light one's gonna go in the back because he's this is bigger and he's a little fatter at the top and I'll just round him up a little bit. I'll just shape the the very edges of this. 
so that it fits in this point, which, you know, it's not going to take much. I'll super glue them together. Not like that's going to make it structural, but it allows me to work with them as a, as a unit. So maybe, do I do that first? Do I super glue them together first? I think I probably should. There we go. There's the fit right there. All right. Be back. Super glued. Yep. We are super glued. So we'll check fit. And I'm not going to trim them anymore. That's where I made my mistake. I usually sand them. Use the sander to bring them into width this way so that's where we're gonna go and I think I'll just probably trim this one up first and get it to fit here and then we'll make this one match I don't know why that seems like a good idea that's how I'm gonna do it and this is not the sander I usually use it was the big one out there and it's cold out there so I don't want to be there I'm using this one show you why I stopped I'm gonna just show you something so that is that's getting pretty close we got we got this much sticking out but if I look down right here in the front I don't know if you'll be able to see it I can tell that there's a, a we're, we're short enough we're gonna fit. Now we're just gonna bring these corners in. We're gonna hit these sides, put that point on there, and I, I bet that gets us pretty darn close. You don't just just go slow at this point. We're I'm in a hurry. I, I don't know why. I shouldn't be, but I am. So I'm telling you, go slow. Don't don't get in a hurry. You can't put it back on there. See that there just dropped right through there that's okay because there's a lot more wood going to be in there next time we put that in there if i can get it out there we go so this is what we ended up with and i can just from experience i can tell you right now we're going to end up cutting some of that off it is not going to go all the way in there even though it looks like it's too small it will not go all the way in there just because i said that it'll go all the way in and give us problems but <laughs> wouldn't be the first time i was wrong not even in this video so wedge done shape to the axe now we're going to go put that on a stick and see how it fits we may end up pulling some of this uh some of the side off we're gonna do everything we can to avoid touching these edges. The front and the back. We don't wanna change that now. We got it where we want it. So here we go. 